नमस्कार वेलकम टू मैथवर्स मैथवर्स मीन्स मैथमेटिक्स एंड यूनिवर्स टूगेदर मैथवर्स नाउ वेलकम टू दिस न्यू सीरीज नाउ फ्रॉम टुडे ऑनवर्स इन दिस सीरीज आई एम गोइंग टू सॉल्व यूपीएससी मेन्स मैथ्स ऑप्शनल पेपर Now, those who are preparing for UPSC, those who want to be a future administrative officer, for them, this optional paper is very important because, as a whole, these two optional papers contain five hundred marks. Okay, so I'm here to help you guys, those who are preparing for UPSC mains. Obviously, I'm here and. i am going to provide you the materials and the books and also the way of studying so that you guys can focus on other topics the general studies topics and the all other stock topics you can focus on those topics rather than this main paper but if you follow carefully my videos i can assure that you can get maximum from these two papers okay so let's start it and how shall i do it now those who are preparing for upsc and no one to teach them the basics obviously they have done beautifully in their uh, bsc days or msc days so i'm here to help them to revise by solving previous year question papers and several other questions from the related topics okay now i'm starting with linear algebra linear algebra is one of the most important part in mathematics and probably one of the most scoring part in any mathematics related competitive examination okay and a famous mathematician i can't remember who but once he said that 90% of mathematics is linear algebra remaining 10% are others though it is not completely true but if we think broadly we can see applications of linear algebra everywhere okay so without any more delay and without wasting your precious times let us start with the questions okay so today i shall start with upsc 2018's main paper mains paper uh, actually this paper 1 i mean the uh, optional paper 1 that means so method is 2 okay uh, i'm starting with uh, paper 1 and it is on linear algebra those who are only starting their preparation now for them i'm saying that you don't have to give that much time for this uh, optional papers uh, for mathematics now for this linear algebra first let me tell you guys are uh, the best possible books for you see those who have completed their msc and uh, were preparing for net or other competitive examinations they can relate to it that the standard of question or oh, not standard i should not use the word standard i should say that difficulty of the question is uh, not that much higher like net or jam or other mathematics related examinations where your academic performances are preferred i mean they are tested but here in upsc examination it is tested whether a candidate is um, completely aware with his uh, bsc or msc studies or not so for that you need to prepare the basics and some keywords keyword topics okay so for that the book for uh, especially i'm talking about linear algebra let us run with uh, one thing at a single time okay after linear algebra i shall go for real analysis okay because these two are uh, two giants okay so let's say our first one is the book the matrix by vashishtha uh it is of krishna publishers krishna publishers book matrix uh this much uh, this much fat book uh it is uh, it contains everything about matrix you can imagine okay uh just go through it you don't have to go for the proofs because um, proofs are not that much required though means have its own it own you know uh, descriptive questions 
but still proofs are not that much important first of all do what make a note and in that note you just write down point by point or one by one all the important theorems related topics and go for the examples of that book try to solve as many examples and exercises of that book as possible second one uh, i would say this book is uh, i don't think whether this book is na nationally that much uh, famous or not but it's a very good one that is abstract and linear algebra by sk mapa See, Matrix, this uh, Vashishta's book, Matrix, is only focused on Matrix, but in this uh, SK Mapa's book, Abstract and Linear Algebra, here you can really find vector space portion, okay, vector space, eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and those portions, such beautiful is given there, okay, and if there is anyone whose basics are already very clear, it is crystal clear already, then they can go if they want if and only if they want they can go for this one that is linear algebra linear algebra by Friedberg F R I D B E R G Friedberg and there is one in cell one of the writers in cell uh, and there is one more so these three books you can follow uh, first of all go through these two books and then this one okay and if anyone say that uh, they doesn't want to take this abstract and linear algebra by sk mapa for them uh, i would suggest one another book that is that is actually problem based uh, or you guys with this uh, three books you can use that also swamp series Swamp series is linear algebra, okay? This is also very good book. So, these four books you can take reference. Now, see, uh, if you don't want to purchase the book, books, then you can have the PDF, okay? I cannot say from which side you can download it because uh, that will be against the law, but you can find it. And those, I believe, that those who are preparing for UPSC, they already know it and they know better than me, okay? So, but in that side also, you can find these two books. The very good PDF you can find of these two. But I'm not pretty sure whether you will get the PDF of these two books. I'm not sure about it. Okay. You may find or you may not. Okay. But one thing I can assure you guys that I shall make my this uh, lecture series in such a way so that you will uh, never get troubled with uh, any mathematical concepts. Okay. And rest depends uh, uh, on you how much you practice if you give uh, if you watch my videos and uh, give one hour every day for means uh, optional paper mathematics then you obviously can do it uh, for and I'm, I'm speaking this for those whose uh, specialization in bsc level was mathematics obviously uh, sometimes this happens that uh, students from other branches like physics or maybe sometimes uh, informatics they take this mathematics subject they take it uh, but for them i'm saying that for if you are coming from other branch like the physics guys know the basics obviously but you should go for the basic books those first two books i say you should go for them first okay now the <laughs> first problem on linear algebra is the first problem on linear algebra uh, 2018's paper was this one they are saying that we have two matrices first one is a and a is 3 cross 2 and second matrix is uh, this one second one is b and it is 2 cross 3 okay so it means a has three rows okay but two columns and for b this one was a and for b it is only two rows okay but three columns now they're asking that what will be and now they're saying they're asking the proof they are saying prove that c equal to a into b this is singular okay 
they are saying to prove this that if A is this matrix, B is this matrix, then C that is equal to the multiplication of A and B, it will be singular. What is the meaning of singular? Obviously, the meaning of singular is that determinant of B, sorry, sorry, sorry determinant of C is equal to zero. Okay. But we see here that though we have one formula and that formula for applying here we, we can get a determinant of c is equal to determinant of a into determinant of b but it's clear that we cannot use this formula here why because a is not a square matrix so we cannot find its determinant but for c since a is 3 cross 2 matrix b is 2 cross 3 matrix therefore Finally, C will be 3 cross 3 matrix, okay, according to the rule of matrix multiplication. Then C is a square one. So C can obviously have a determinant, but we have to prove that determinant will be singular. Okay, so in this moment, we should go for some other alternative route since we cannot calculate the determinant or we cannot predict anything about the determinant, okay. See, one thing we know, if, if, uh, there is a square matrix of n cross n, square matrix of n cross n, if, if its rank, let the matrix be C, okay, if the rank of C is equal to n, then only it will have a non-zero determinant or in other words, in that case only, this matrix, the determinant of this matrix will be non-zero, that is, it will be non-singular. Okay, so by somehow if we can prove that in this case our this C has rank less than 3, then it will prove that C is actually singular. Because if the rank of this matrix C, which I am taking here as n cross n, any square matrix of n order, if its rank is less than n, okay, then determinant of c will be zero okay and now that's i'm going to prove there is one formula it says or i guess a theorem it says that the rank of this c matrix cannot exceed cannot exceed the ranks of A and B okay now what can be the possible rank of A it can be maximally 2 if it is maximum then it can be 2 if what is the maximum rank of B it is also maximum rank of B is 2 so rank of C okay just a moment by row I am denoting rank okay by row I am denoting rank so here row of A is less or equal to 2 row of B is again less or equal to 2 okay okay then it means that maximum rank that this C can have that is the row of C the maximum value of it is 2 which is obviously less than 3 and according to this rule determinant of C here is 0 okay i hope it is clear what we did actually when we found these two matrices and we just said to find the find out whether the uh, uh the product is singular or not then we cannot go for the determinant one therefore we took the alternative route of rank and by proving the value of rank we showed that c is obviously a singular one okay so this is the main trick here for this problem whenever uh, any one of you come by this type of thing where you directly can this is not only for linear algebra this is for all other topics also where you cannot directly calculate the uh, required answer using the traditional method then first of all think the final requirement like here they say that c is singular then try to think <coughs> that how this result can be found in an alternative way. Okay, that will do the trick. Okay, without any more delay, let's go to the next question.
uh, the next question says that okay they're saying there are two vectors that is actually the basis vectors uh, e1 that is 1 comma 0 and e2 that is 0 comma 1 and they're saying that we have two vectors one of them is a1 that is 2 comma minus 1 and a2 that is 1 comma 3 okay and they're saying that we have to express these two as a linear combination of them okay let's do it see 1 comma 0 equal to let me assume there are some constants uh, let them say lambda and mu lambda into 2 comma minus 1 plus mu oh my goodness bloody insect okay so we have to find out the value of this definite lambda 1 and mu 1 we have i have to find out the value of lambda 1 and mu 1 from here okay so it will be 1 comma 0 it will remain as it is and in this side 2 lambda 1 comma this mu 1 oh, oh this one will be plus comma minus lambda 1 plus 3 mu 1 okay let's calculate it how to do it see very simple one compare the components so it will be 2 lambda 1 plus mu 1 that is equal to 1 and the second equation will become minus lambda 1 plus 3 mu 1 this is equal to 0 so uh, rather than finding that this finding this one we should go for this okay because the right hand side is 0 so from here I am getting lambda 1 equal to 3 mu 1 if lambda 1 is equal to 3 mu 1 it means that lambda 1 is 3 mu 1 so this one will become 2 into 3 mu 1 or in other words 6 mu 1 plus mu 1 so it is 1 therefore mu 1 is equal to 1 by 7 let's find out uh, lambda 1 so lambda 1 is 3 into mu 1 therefore lambda 1 is equal to oh my god lambda 1 is equal to 3 by 7 okay i think it is it so for the first one i mean for 1 comma 0 we can write it as 3 by 7 plus 1 by 7 okay uh, if you guys want to do a cross check, then you can do it obviously. See, 3 into 2 is 6, and here 1 into 1 is 1. So, when I shall add them, it will become 7. So, 7 by 7 will become 1. Now, let us find out the second one. Now, for the second one, we shall follow the same steps. Okay, so let me do it again. Uh, I am taking some small step jumps here. I'm assuming lambda 2 and mu 2 so for that lambda 2 mu 2 lambda 2 mu 2 nothing will change except these two okay rest will remain the same now let's find out okay so this is the first part I'm doing for the second one so 2 lambda 2 plus mu 2 is equal to 0 it means mu 2 is equal to minus or 2 lambda 2 let me take it here here was minus lambda 2 and mu 2 is equal to minus 2 lambda 2 therefore it will become minus 6 lambda 2 and that will be equal to 1 so lambda 2 is equal to minus 1 by 7 and mu 2 is equal to 2 by 7 so 0 comma 1 we can write it as minus 1 by 7 into this one 2 comma minus 1 plus 2 by 7 into this one 1 comma 3 again if we want to cross check this is minus 1 2 minus 2 2 into 1 2 so adding 0 minus 1 by 7 into 1 so minus 1 so 1 2 into 3 6 finally adding 1 okay so these two are the answers this one and this one are the answers okay see 
already I have solved 20 marks question from UPSC main paper. Can you guys imagine that? What is actually what does actually mean? It means that two questions. Uh, how much time this two will take? Not that much. And we have done 20 marks. Now let's come for the next one. They're saying that if A and B are similar matrices, then they have same eigenvalues. What they are saying? Question number 2a. They are saying A and B are similar matrices. Similar matrices. Okay. What are the meaning of similar matrices? Similar matrices mean there exists a matrix P such that A is equal to P B P inverse. Okay. This is the definition of similar matrices. Now I have to prove that these two, these two have the same eigenvalues. Now, obviously, we cannot calculate eigenvalues in the characteristic equation here, directly at least, because uh, they are not safe what they are. So, we should uh, find some different way, okay? Now, before coming to eigenvalue, let us talk about the father of eigenvalue, actually, who gives us eigenvalue. Who is that? There is the characteristic equation of this line. What is characteristic equation in symbolic form? For A, if I want to find out the characteristic equation of A, then I can write it in this, this way. If we uh, expand this determinant, then only we can get the characteristic equation in the variable is lambda there. Okay. So, let's, let us somehow uh, bring this factor this side here. Okay, let us do it. How can I do it? We can simply subtract this lambda i from the both side, okay? Let us do it. So a minus lambda i in this side equal to p b p inverse minus lambda i in this side, okay? Now, if by any means I can bring this one, b minus lambda i, I can this I can bring this one and this one will be the characteristic equation of matrix B okay so how can I do that well I have a technique to do that obviously I can do this thing keep this one as it was I can first multiply by P here keep the lambda as it is and then multiply by P inverse I can do this for only one reason because p into lambda i is actually lambda is a scalar one so it will remain outside this p into i will give us p and when I shall multiply one p inverse in this side then it will get another p inverse therefore finally we shall get lambda i here therefore multiplying p and p inverse is not changing anything now comes the trick I am taking the P from the left side and P inverse from the right side. Now, now I have got the A minus lambda I think in the left side, B minus lambda I think in the right side. So what is remaining is only to take the determinant. Okay, let me take it. Taking determinant on both sides. This is, uh, I'm, I'm writing determinant by this, uh, this sign, okay? So it is becoming A minus lambda I is equal to determinant of P into determinant of B minus lambda I into determinant of P inverse. Now, we know another important form. And the formula is <coughs> determinant of A inverse is equal to 1 by determinant of A. This is the formula that we know and I am going to use this formula here. So how to use it? Say P and P inverse here. So P inverse means 1 by determinant of P. Let me write it in the same step. Okay. Then it is 1 by determinant of P. So this two thing will cancel out 
and finally I am getting a minus lambda i is equal to b minus lambda i it means that these two matrices have the same characteristic equation and when they have the same characteristic equation I mean if two trees are only coconut tree then I cannot expect uh, mango from one and jackfruit from the another so it will give us coconut from the whole tree that means these two equations will give us same characteristic roots which is better known as eigenvalues okay so I think this one is also proved now let's come to the last one and this question was 12 marks question so we have done 32 so far now come to the last one a linear algebra question without giving simultaneous equations is nothing so they have provided one and the equation says they have given us a system of equation it says x uh, okay wait a moment x plus 3y minus 2z minus 1 this is the first equation 5y plus 3z equal to minus 8 this is the second one x minus 2y minus 5z this one is equal to the last one okay and they're asking the very traditional one this, this question is a very traditional one they're asking whether this system the system will have a single solution no solution or infinitely many solution no, no let's find out that now see how we can uh, determine whether uh, this system will have a uh, same uh, single equation infinite equation or actually no equation okay we can do i i am doing it in uh, several ways actually you guys can see now uh, if i simply subtract the th uh, I mean, let me number this one one two three first of all let me subtract three from one that is one minus three i'm doing this one so it will give us x and uh, let me write it see what is happening x and minus x zero five y plus three z is equal to minus eight these two equations are same it means that this three equation actually represent only single this equation and what does this equation imply in our uh, regular this xy plane huh? this is a simple straight line and what is a straight line it is actually y divided by minus 8 by 5 plus z uh, this one was z okay oh sorry 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 it is three variable now so it is actually a plane i should draw the third axis also i should draw the third one okay let z be here okay so this is actually a plane this three equation all of them are the equation of plane and the final one which comes here is also giving us the plane and this plane is plus minus 8 by 3 is equal to 1 so in a y-axis oh my goodness i have to take it this way oh God. okay so in the y-axis it might be here a slightly more than one and in z-axis it will be somewhere here slightly more than two okay then actually the plane will come in this way this will be the actual plane equation of plane so uh, how many solution we can get here we can get obviously we can get here infinite number of solution okay so there is infinitely many solution but not every time we can be lucky to do only a single step and find out whether it has how many equations or not so we should use Kramer's rule which is a very traditional method actually uh, which is the safest method what we have to do that for the for calculating Kramer's rule 
uh, for using Kramer's rule. Now, for using Kramer's rule, let us take the determinant of the coefficient matrix. Then it will be 1, 3, minus 2, 0, 5, 3, 1, minus 2, minus 5. Actually, calculating the determinant and finding the value of this determinant is equal to 0 is the same thing as what I did before. What actually I should do here? See, uh, simply I can see here that these two rows, these two rows, the first element of these two rows are same. So if I want to expand the determinant, then I can use one operation and I can subtract the first row from the last one. Okay. And by doing that, what I shall get here? Uh, this one will be 1, 1, 3, 2. This will be 0, 5, 3. And now, subtract 1 from this one. So it will remain as 0. Subtract 3 from minus 2. It will be minus 5. Subtract minus 2 from minus 5, that is, it will become minus of 3, okay? And if I take minus common from this last line, so it will become actually minus 1 into this determinant. Now here in this determinant, we see these two rows have uh, same entries, that the value of the determinant will be 0. And according to Kramer's rule, if the determinant of the coefficient matrix is equal to 0, then it will have infinitely many solutions, okay? Uh, then, I think it is done. So, so far, we have done actually 10 plus 10 plus 12 plus 13 as a whole 45 marks question from UPSC main paper, uh, means uh, optional mathematics paper, one. And total marks of the paper is 250. So linear algebra itself consists almost one fifth of the marks, total marks. Okay. That's why you guys can understand how much important this linear algebra portion is. Okay. So I believe that it is done. You guys go through the videos again if you have find any doubt there. And one more thing, one more thing that I want to tell you guys that do as I say, I mean, you should not do as I say, I mean, uh, try to do as I instruct and uh, try to solve questions by your own. Anywhere, if you guys can find any doubt, just uh, send me that out. I shall try my best to solve them. Okay. And best luck for your preparation. Best luck for next year's UPSC. Uh, do your best, all the best. Please do like this video, share on your friends and also enemies. And uh, obviously, subscribe to my channel. Okay, and what I can say more, all the best, do your best, thank you, Chet.